I'm offended on all of their behalf. Where are you folks from? Um, I live from New York. From New York. From New York? Yes. New York, New York? Uh, we oh got it. Long Island? Yep. Everybody's from New York the other day, bro. Manhattan. Yeah. I was saying New York, New York, they had to name it twice. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I won't say the second uh, sentence, but that's it. All right. <laughs> okay. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. From New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey? Mm -mm. Is that part of our United States? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that's a nice one. <laughs> okay. Well, we got a small group. We're getting started. We'll get people coming along the way. Um, we're going to talk about catapulting, shooting airplanes off the deck, off the carrier. Uh, maybe your familiarity is not, you know, real good. Maybe it's on video or something. All float commercial flights, though, right? Sure. Good from the air here. Um, so it probably took 15 or 20 minutes to get everybody on board, 15 or 20 minutes to taxi out. Maybe the pilot said something to you, and then you know, if it went for takeoff, you could feel the airplane rumble a little bit, you know, it was going to take off power. Normal feels about.
maybe the pilot says something to you, and then you know, if it went for takeoff, you could feel the airplane rumble a little bit, you know, it was good to take off power. Normal feels about 9,000 feet, so you're going to probably take about 4,000 feet of that runway to get airborne, to get launched out. You know, nice and gentle takeoff, off, off to San Diego, you yeah, got super. A little bit different on the carrier, a little bit different. We're going to take an airplane off from right here, standing right here, where it is right now, the airborne. 249 feet. We're going to do that in 2.4 seconds. We're going to do that on this catapult alone every 90 seconds. And we have two catapults, so we're going to alternate them, sequence them. So we launch an airplane every 45 seconds. So keep those numbers in mind when we're talking about this whole evolution. Pretty quick evolution. We do this. Okay. Two catapults on the, on the midway, port and starboard. When everybody looks at this photograph, first thing they look at, they go, look at the smoke. And in fact, it's not smoke, that is steam. Because that's steam that we lost from the catapult. That represents about 60 gallons of fresh water we just lost there. One reason we have to keep making fresh water, we have to make a lot of steam. So that's steam that we've just lost. Look at these two big barn door things back here. Those are called jet blast deflectors, just what the name implies. They're lowered and raised to deflect the jet blast because he's going to go the full power. If you're walking back here like this guy is, he's at full power. Guess where you are? You're on the side. So we have to have something to deflect the jet blast. Uh, they're actually hollow. We're going to salt water so to keep them cool because they're going to get full power when they're in that position right there. So those are jet blast deflectors. <coughs> And we have a lot of people up here. They're all wearing different colored jerseys. Colored jersey didn't know it's what their job is, what their responsibility is. So if you're wearing a yellow colored jersey, you're a taxi director. The pilot gets in his aircraft, looks outside, and he sees the taxi director. The guy says, I'm your taxi director. You will follow me. And that's exactly what you do. You never move the airplane unless you're under positive control by a taxi director. Yellow shirt, you got left, right, whatever. So he's always under positive control by a taxi director. If you're a green colored jersey, you're a catapult guy. You're the guy that hooks up the airplane, takes care of the catapult, takes care of the equipment. So these are guys, they're going to hook you up or green. If you're a red color jersey, you are a ordnance guy, an armor guy. So the aircraft is armed back there, but when it comes up here the catapult, we've got these lanyards here. They have to be pulled. So our ordnance guy is going to come out and pull these lanyards. And she'll actually show them to the pilots and says, hey, now you have control of your bombs. You've opened, we've opened the circuitry, so you have control of the bombs. And then uh, the last guys up here are in white color jersey, you're the safety checkers. So if there's any problem with any safety with the airplane or the catapult, get a hold of one of these guys. So they'll make it make it right for you. So safety checkers are wearing white color jerseys. And then the last thing about this photograph that we can see, we can actually see the photograph, but the carrier itself has to turn into the wind to get 30 knots of wind down the deck. We can't launch or recover airplanes because we have 30 knots of wind minimum down this deck. So we have to turn in the wind and find out 30 knots. Which brings up the point. Let's say the carrier out in the middle of the ocean. And then once we got the wind at all, the skipper says, let's watch the airplane. What do we do? Go fast. <laughs> Make our own wind. Get, get this carrier moving. Get 30 knots over this deck. That's why the carriers were built to be so fast. Top end of the midway was 33 knots. That's 38 miles an hour. Think about that. 30 miles an hour. You get water ski on the midway. We wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it. And that's they build it sort of for speed so they get window of the deck to launch and recover the aircraft. Okay, kind of nuts and bolts about the catapult. We're not going to get too technical of it. The catapult is, is made up of two big pistons. You can see replicas right over there. Here's the end on. There's an 18 inches in diameter under two cylinders. You come up here and through the deck, you see the shuttle right here. Here's the shuttle. And here's the launch bar from the air. The airplane owns this launch bar. He comes up here and drops it in front of the shuttle. And that's that's the only part of the, the catapult we can see right now. And here's what's important. There's nothing in front of here blocking this shuttle or the drop bar, okay? Launch bar. So the airplane's gonna taxi up, put the launch bar in front of the shuttle, and a high pressure steam's gonna hit that piston. And in this case, we need this airplane to go, let's say, 160 miles an hour to get airborne. Up steam to launch this piston forward. So he's going to go 160 miles an hour and get airborne. If he's going 160 miles an hour, the piston's going 160 miles an hour, right? Makes sense to me. The airplane goes flying. We got a big piston. He's going 160 miles an hour. What do we do with that ride? We're going to stop it, right? I don't want you to use it just once. So we're going to stop it at water break. Water does not compress. So there's a big tank of water at the end of the stroke. 
that sphere out there in front of the piston is going to hit that water tank, that water reservoir, and stop it in less than five feet. Now, the two pistons weigh 6,300 pounds. They're going 160 miles an hour, and they're stopping in less than five feet. What's that? That's a train wreck, right? <laughs> this whole, literally, this, as big as this ship is, this whole ship will shudder and shake. No doubt in anybody's mind that we just fired the catapult off. We have a cup of coffee back there in mid-galley. Oh, just watch the airplane. Everybody knows it. That's a lot of kinetic energy they have to dissipate in a very short time. They do it by a water break. Okay. I like this. Okay, great photo here. Look, okay, here's a Marine F-18. How do you know it's a Marine? How do you know it's a Marine airplane? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So a Marine F-18, you can see the the flip, jet blast deflector is just back, come back. It was flush, so we can taxi over. He's about halfway back up. We have a taxi director out there telling the pilot to come forward. We have a white safety inspector. He's out there looking the airplane over, make sure there's no doors open, no fuel leaking, no hydraulic leaking. He's checking it over. We have a couple of green shirted catapult guys. He's going to jump on the airplane and hook him up. And then we got another guy over here. Can we see this? Green shirted guy, he's holding something up. This is what he's holding up. He's holding up a weight board. He's saying to the pilot, we've calculated your airplane for this launch to weigh 60,400 pounds. Do you in fact weigh within 500 pounds? Oh, sorry, 500 pounds. Do you in fact weigh 60,400 pounds? The pilot 90% of the time will say, yep, we're good on the weight. Now he'll take this board and show it to another guy like in a little doghouse back there and he'll say, hey, pilot says we're good on the weight. 60,000 pounds airplane is good. 60,400 pounds is good. Why is that important? Why does the pilot care? The pilot really cares because they're going to put enough steam in that catapult to launch a 60,000 pound airplane. Let's say they screwed it up. Let's say it's a 60,000 pound airplane, but they only put enough steam in to launch a 20,000 pound airplane. The airplane doesn't do this, it does that. So they ask the pilot, you get the last vote here, believe me. You get the last vote because you're the first one on the scene that doesn't get screwed up. So you tell me how much you weigh, we can adjust it up or down. But that's your weight. So that's how much pressure we're going to put in that piston to get you here. Okay, here's here's the airplane taxiing up. Here's the launch bar. Okay, now watch this. This guy, the uh, armor guy's going to arm these guns. But watch the uh, catapult guy. He's going to go up and say, hey, the launch bar is not in front of the shuttle where it should be. So he's going to tell the catapult, he's going to tell the taxi driver, tell the pilot, to move the airplane up so it's in front of the launch of the, the, the shuttle. Watch this. Okay, so this taxi director is doing this, pilot's doing that, and now the launch bar is in front of the shuttle where it should be, right there. Okay, now, there it is. <laughs> now, in about 10 seconds, they're going to tell the pilot to come off your brakes. In about 10 seconds after that, he's going to go to full power. Does that sound like a good idea? No brakes, <laughs> full power on your plane. Would you do that? No, you wouldn't. You're smarter than that. Okay, what they're going to do is they're going to hold me back with this. A hold back bar. This gets heavier every day. We're going to anchor the airplane down to the ship until the catapult's fired with this device right here. This is going to be into the ship. This is going to be anchored right behind the nose here, those wheels right there. Okay? And this is what's holding them back. This is the what's connecting them all up. It's right here. It's called a dog bone, very technical term. Okay, so this part's in the holdback bar. This part is in the airplane, in the, in the physically in the airplane. When the catapult's fired, this thing is milled very specifically. Come break. Right. Separates. It goes flying now. Okay, this part stays with the airplane physically. This part stays in the holdback bar. But it just releases even by breaking it. But it won't move at all until the catapult's fired. So they need some kind of forward motion. To get him moving. And it's milled very specifically to snap the brake. Okay? That's what holds you back. Okay, now here's a launch bar in front of the shuttle. And then right in here is like a little coupling. They snap that dog on into it right in there. See it? Snap it in there, make sure it's nice and tight, shove it down. Now he's not going anywhere until the catapult's fired. Okay, now, when that launch bar is dropped, either manually or by the pilot, you can normally see, and it happens 
that there's a gap, yeah, maybe two inches. Like anything mechanically, you're going to move it, you want it nice and tight, you want things slop around in there. So hydraulically, they're going to push this shuttle forward to take that gap out. So it's called taking it into tension, which means they're very shortly going to fire this guy. Okay. When it goes into tension, there's a signal to take it into tension. The guy that actually, the guy that gives the signal to fire the catapult, this is the catapult officer we'll talk about in just a second. The guy that actually fires the catapult, a 19-year-old sailor. He stands right over here. He, once it goes into tension, he puts his hands in the air. Because he's saying to everybody, okay, we're in attention. When the catapult officer gives me the signal to fire this thing, I'm gonna shoot it. I'm gonna push this button right here with my left hand. Until then, I'm not doing anything. My hands are gonna be in the air. I'm not gonna fill in my cap. I'm not gonna do anything. My hands are in the air. Because if this thing goes off prematurely, I didn't do it, folks. My hands are in the air, not my fault. That's why he, it's a safety check. It's a safety check. So he puts his hands in the air. Now, the last person to actually touch the airplane is the catapult guy. He comes out and he says, everything's hooked up. I checked the dog bone, I checked the launch bar, everything looks good. Here's the guy in the doghouse. He says, yep, I'm good. I've got the weight in there, I've got the temperature, I've got the wind, a couple things. What's important? And now the taxi director looks at the pilot and says, Mr. Pilot, pay attention to the catapult officer. That mannequin right there. He's the guy that's going to give the signal to get fired. Okay? The cannibal officer is going to look down the deck, make sure it's clear, then he looks at the pilot and says, run up your engines, give you full power on them. The pilot will take the throttles, take them with full military power, after burners if he has them, full power, takes his control stick, wipes out the code, the, the cockpit, makes sure the flight controls are free and easy, there's people are checking them, checks his instruments real quick, they're in the green, he's happy with the airplane, he salutes the cannibal officer. Permission to leave the ship. Okay, the cabin officer is going to make one last look down the deck. And then the last thing he does, more than looking, he feels like he's done a thousand of these. And he knows how the ship is moving at that time. Remember, the ship does this and it does this. So he's not going to be very popular. He launches it to drink water. He wants to make the ship as low level or nose up a little bit. So he knows the delay. So he'll feel the ship, he'll feel the ship, and he'll touch the deck. Once he touches that deck, that young 19 year old sailor says, I see that signal, and it's coming down. We're sending this guy off. Here's some good videos I'm watching, so let's watch a couple. Okay, now watch the hold back bar on the launch bar. Hold back bar on the launch bar, boom, there he goes. That's what held him back. That's what held him back. Remember, there's two catapults now, there's port and starboard. So when they launch the port, then they launch the starboard, port, starboard, port, starboard. Every 45 seconds. Okay, here he goes. Checking him, he's checking him, he's checking him, he's checking you, you're checking. I'm touching the deck, and the valve is coming over right now, and there he goes. Remember, that's 2.4 seconds from a standing start to flight speed. Okay, this is his last tour, hopefully. Here's the guy in the doghouse, but now he does check it. Got a salute? I'm looking at you, I'm checking you. He's good, you're happy, I'm happy. Shoot him. There he goes. He's here, boy. Okay, next video. Real time. This is real time. Second thing is, when he starts moving, look at his left shoulder. Count yourself one potato, two potato. Before you get to three potato, he's there, boy. So watch this. This is real time now. One, two, three. He's there, boy. That's how quick it is. That's how quick it is. Now, if you're in the port catapult, left catapult, you may get a left turn. It's called a clearing turn. If you're right catapult, you make a right turn, right clearing turn. The last thing you want to do is point out straight ahead. If you just stop working, you jump out of the airplane, you get a good shoot, you're in the water, you're having a bad day, but now an aircraft can run you over. So stay away from the carrier. Make a clearing turn, get away from the ship. It's done it for a reason. Okay, let's go back to that one schematic kind of ice summation. Here's the big steam accumulator, steam accumulator. As you can see, it's out of the hangar deck. Watch the sequence here. Here comes the jet knock defectors up. Airplane goes to full power. Here comes the steam. There goes the catapult. He's launched. The catapult gets stopped by the water break. This little device out here is a technical term called a grabber. It runs out brings the catapult back into position because his wingman, his buddy, is 90 seconds behind him. Now, 90 seconds is the benchmark. These guys get good and they do after a couple months. Go down to a minute. 
So one minute of flying an airplane off that down hold there a minute. A lot of stuff there. <laughs> Any questions at all, ladies and gentlemen? Everybody happy with it? Yes, sir. Okay. Have a good day, folks. We'll see you Thank later. you. Good.